Well, here's an interesting problem on radioactive decay that uses the half-life problem. So let me set it up for you first. Imagine that a tree grows in the forest somewhere. And as it grows, it's taking in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. That's how trees build themselves up. Now, carbon dioxide contains carbon. And out of all the carbon on Earth, about one part per trillion, or one in every trillion carbon molecules, carbon atoms, excuse me, are the isotope carbon-14, which decays radioactively, and we can detect that decay. Now, while the tree's alive, it's exchanging carbon with the atmosphere all the time, and so the carbon in the plant is about one part per trillion, too. But now let's imagine that the plant dies. So now it's no longer exchanging carbon with the atmosphere, and the carbon that's left in it starts to decay, or continues to decay, but with no replacement. And so the amount of carbon-14 in the plant, the dead plant, will be less and less as time goes on. So let's imagine how we can use this. Imagine that we've found a sample of wood from a glacier. It's been frozen for a long time. And we measure the amount of carbon-14 in it, and we find that instead of one part per trillion, one carbon in every trillion molecules, one carbon-14, we only have 0.4 parts per trillion. Well, we can make use of that to determine the age of the tree. We'll start by writing down the half-life formula. That's a of t is equal to a naught times one-half to the t over k, where k is the half-life. Now we'll just organize ourselves and fill in what we know. A of t is 0.4 parts per trillion, so we'll fill in 0.4 there. The initial amount is 1 part per trillion, and the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years, plus or minus about 40 years. We'll, we'll stick to 5730. So we can write that all out, and you can see that we're we, we are trying to solve for t, the time. So we'll just divide by 1, and uh, we'll take a log of either side. And as always, what taking a log of both sides does is releases that variable from the exponent. And then we can just rearrange this a little bit to find the time. So you can see that the time, or the age of the tree, is just 5730 times this ratio of logs. And if we get out a calculator, we'll see that that's about 7,575 years. So that's the approximate age of our sample.